All right, what's going on everyone? So at some point when you're creating a website or an application, you're probably going to be reaching out to an API to fetch some data, or you may be using the set timeout method to delay something on your website from happening. In either case, you're probably going to want to display some sort of loading animation to indicate to a user that you're performing this task. Now, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create six different loading animations that you can use for your website or application. Now, how we're gonna build these is using pure CSS, and then we're gonna use animations to bring these um, to life. As you can see here, we have the spinning circle, we have these bouncing balls, we have the uh, circles or balls that, you know, the opacity is going to zero. And then we have here the circles are scaling up and down. We have these squares that are going back and forth. And then I guess this one just kind of um, scatters in and out. I really don't know what you would call that, okay? But like I said, all we're going to be using to create this is CSS. And then we're going to be using animations. Now, if you've never used animations before, I'm going to go through a brief walkthrough that shows you how to use these and all about them. So if you've already dealt with animations, you can go ahead and skip the next part and head right into the portion where we're actually going to be creating these. So that is what we're going to be building here in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's begin by learning what are CSS animations. So simply put, an animation lets you change from one style to another, okay? Now, to use CSS animations, you must first specify what we call a keyframes here for the animation. Now, keyframes are what is going to hold the styles or the properties that you want to change for that certain element, all right? Now, you create a keyframe actually inside of your style sheet, like this right here, using the keywords from and to. So what you would say here is you declare at keyframes, and then you give it a name. Now, the name can be anything you want. In this case, we're just going to be calling this example, but you'd more than likely want to call it, you know, uh, something similar to what you're going to be changing here. So as you can see, we want to animate the uh, background color from the color of orange to the background color of green, and that would be how you create a simple keyframe, okay? Now, there is also another way to create a keyframe, and that is by using the percentage here. Now, in the previous example, which is this, oops, too far, which is this right here, the from and to would represent 0% would be from, and to would equal 100%. Now, the reason why you would perhaps use uh, percentages instead of from and to is if you want to make a more complex animation. So, in this example here, you can see that we're now changing the background color four different times. Uh, so we're here at 0%, we're using the color of red, and then a quarter way through at 25%, we change it to yellow. And then at halfway through, we change it to blue, and then 100%, uh, we change it to green. So when you use the percentages here, it gives you a more, uh, you know, more, I guess, leeway and, you know, allows you to make, you know, simply put more complex animations. Now, to use an animation, you're going to need to actually bind the keyframe that you created to the actual element by using the animation name property. As you can see here, we have a div, and what we are doing here is we're declaring the animation name property, and we're setting it equal to the actual animation name we gave here in the keyframes, okay? So that's how you go ahead and actually bind your keyframe to the element by declaring it here with the animation name. Now, in addition to the animation name property, there is also a few others as well. So to begin here, we have the animation duration. So simply put, this determines how long the animation should take to complete. So an example I have here you can define for this property is four seconds. So you can use seconds or you can actually define milliseconds here. All right. Now, one thing to note is if you don't define an animation duration, the default value is zero. So if you actually don't define a value here, your animation will actually not run. All right, so you gotta make sure you, al you always define a animation duration value here. Okay, so the next thing we have here is the animation delay, which simply put is going to uh, define a delay for the start of the animation that you created. And once again, it accepts the seconds here or milliseconds as a value. Now, next up we have the animation 
iteration count. So this is simply going to specify the number of times that the animation should run. So you can either specify it one, two, three, four, five, six, or whatever number you want. Or if you want it to continually run, you can provide it the value of infinite. Now, next up, we have what we call the animation direction. So this specifies whether an animation should be played forwards, backwards, or in alternate cycles. So if we head back to our animation here, so by default, the normal um, direction is going to be from 0% to 100. Now, if we were to give the animation direction of reverse, then it's going to run from 100% to zero. Now, the other two we have is going to be alternate, which is going to mean that the animation is played forward first, then backwards. And then we have alternate reverse, which means the animation is played backwards first, then forward. Next, we have the animation timing function property. Now, this controls the speed curve of the actual animation. Now, the values you can actually pass here are going to be ease, linear, ease in, ease out, ease in, out, or you could actually create your own using the cubic bezier option. Now, we're not going to get into um, creating our own timing function here in this video but if you want to get more into that you can actually search this up on google and there is quite a few websites that will allow you to actually test out and create your custom timing functions here so moving on here the last one we're going to talk about is going to be the animation fill mode property now by default you can see here that css animations do not affect the element before the first keyframe is played or after the last keyframe is played. Now with this animation fill mode property, we can actually override this behavior. So by default, the animation will not, uh, will not apply any styles to the element before or after it is executing as we just talked about here. But using the following uh, values here of four words, what will happen is the element will retain the style values that is set by the last keyframe and vice versa for backwards the element will get the style values that is set by the first keyframe value all right and then if you set it equal to both then the animation will follow the rules for both forwards and backwards all right and finally what we have here is going to be the animation shorthand property so this is pretty simple all it's going to do is allow you to combine all these properties into one and make it more condensed and take up less lines of your style sheet because as you can see right here we have six different properties and this is not even actually anything on the div so you can see how using the animation shorthand property can clean up your code um, quite a bit all right and there is no particular order that you have to define these in but as you can see here we just went from top to bottom by starting with the name then the duration, the timing function, the delay, the iteration, and then the animation direction. But the ability to uh, put these in any order is up to you. This is just the way I went ahead and chose to do it. All right, so that is going to do it for my walkthrough here with animation. So let's head over to VS Code and get started with actually creating our loading spinners. All right, here in VS Code, I have an empty folder, and we're going to start by creating our index.html. So I'll say index.html, and then we need our style sheet. So I'm going to call this style.css. And let's go ahead and create our basic boilerplate with Emmet here. So exclamation point and tab will go ahead and create that for us. And we're going to give this a title of CSS loading animations. And then let's link up our style sheet here in the heading section. And there we go. Okay. Now, next thing I want to go ahead and do is import some base styling here. So this is pretty simple. This has nothing to do with the animation. This is just going to be a way for me to display it properly. So just a simple reset here, some styling on the body with a background color and a minimum height. And then we're just simply going ahead and giving each div uh, some separation with a margin bottom of 120 pixels. Okay. So that is all the setup we need to do. So the first thing we want is we're going to be creating here, I should say, let me get rid of this, is going to be, uh, we're gonna go from the top down. So we're gonna start with this circle that goes in a circle and you know continues to uh, go round and round. So what we wanna do is inside of our body tag here, we're going to create a div with the class of circle spinner and inside of here, I'm going to create an empty span tag, and we're going to leave that empty. 
Now, just to keep things clean, I'm going to use some comments here because we are going to be having um, multiple of uh, multiple loaders in here. So to keep things clean, I'm going to go ahead and use some comments here. So we're going to give this a name of circle loading spinner. Okay. Now, let's begin here by actually uh, creating this portion right here. Now, we're not going to animate it at first, but we want to create... Uh, the actual half circle here. So let's go ahead and start with that. So we want to target our target here, circle, spinner, and you want to say the span here. Now for this, we're going to display this as block. We're going to give it a width and height of 70 pixels. Okay. And then what we want to do is give it a border of two pixels, solid, and then give it a transparent color here. Now to make this circular or to round it, we want to give it a border radius of 50%. And then since we gave the entire border a color of transparent, what we can do to get only that half of a top circle is we can say border, top, color. And in this project, we're going to be using the color teal. Feel free to use any color you want and experiment with that. But in this project, we're going to be using teal. And this will go ahead and give us the desired effect that we have right here. So if we open up our index.html with our live server, you should see that we have that half circle. Now we can increase the border to whatever size you want. So if you want to make it a little thicker, we can go ahead and say four pixels and you can see now it is a lot thicker. So I think for right now we're going to keep it at four uh, just so you can see it on the page because it's the only thing on here right now. All right. So now that we have this actually created, Let's go ahead and start to animate this. So what we want to do here is we want to simply rotate this on the z-axis 360 degrees. Okay, so it's actually going to be a very simple animation here. So what we want to do is first create our, create our keyframes here. Now I'm going to go ahead and give this a name of circle loading. And inside of here, we actually don't need to use the from keyword. We can simply use the to because by default, it's already going to be at the desired location we want. So we don't need to alter that. So we can simply use to here and we want to do a transform and we want to do a rotate and we want to say on the Z axis here and we're going to pass this 360 degrees as the value. OK, so now that we have our keyframe, our keyframe created, if I can speak, we want to bind it here to our circle spinner span. So what we're going to be using here is the animation shorthand. So the first thing I'm going to define is the animation name, which is circle loading. Okay. The next thing I'm going to define here is the duration of the animation. And for this, I'm going to say 1.2 seconds. So I'm going to say 1200 milliseconds. And then for the actual um, timing of this, we're going to be using ease. And then we want to give this a value of infinite so that the iteration keeps on happening. OK, so if we save this and we head over to our uh, index.html, you can see that now this is running in a circle. So we can alter some things to mess with this. So what we can say here is let's go ahead and make this animation longer. Let's go ahead and define this to be two seconds here. You can see how much slower this is and you know I don't think that looks great but you can go ahead and mess with these any way you want. And then we can also change this instead of being infinite we can change this to let's say three. Okay and as you can see there it'll only run three times so since it already ran three times it'll stop so one, two, three and then it's going to stop. All right so let me go ahead and put that all back to how we had it so we'll say infinite here and then 1200 milliseconds. All right, so that is going to be how you create a circle spinner. Now, the next animation we're going to be taking a look at here is the circle bounce effect. All right, so let's head over to VS Code and get started. So, right below our circle spinner div, I'm going to go ahead and create a few line breaks here. And we're going to create a new comment here. We're going to call this circle bounce and then let's go ahead and create our div here it's going to have the class of circle bounce as well now for this animation we're going to need four span tags because if you look at the animation we have four different elements here for this um, particular animation so what we're going to do here is simply create four span tags and then we'll just go ahead and duplicate this three more times and that is going to be the simple markup we need for this so 
let's begin with our styling here. So what we want to do here is first off for the entire circle bounce uh, div here, we want to set this uh, display to flex so that they're in a row because right now if we just uh, styled up our span tags, they would be in a column. So let's go ahead and say circle bounce and then we're going to simply just give this a display and set that equal to flex and that'll be it for that uh, that div particularly next up we want to actually style our span tags here so we're going to say circle bounce and we're going to say span and we're going to start off by giving these a margin right of four pixels display as block we want to give these a height and width of 20 pixels And then we're going to give this a border radius to uh, make it a circle. And we're going to set this equal to 50%. And then once again, we're going to give this a background color of teal, just, you know, based on the uh, style for this project, you can, you know, feel free to, um, you know, <clears throat> experiment with any color you want. But we're going to be using teal here. So if I save this and we head over to our project here, you'll see that we have these four circles. But nothing's happening yet. So let's begin to work on our animation. So when we look at this and we go to our animation, all that's happening here is a circle is getting translated 50 pixels. I know that because that's how much I set it to, but the, the circle is getting translated on the Y axis up and we're going to be setting that to 50 pixels. So that's all our animation is going to consist of. Okay. So it's actually going to be once again, a fairly simple animation. Now, most animations are fairly simple when you actually think about it. They may look complex when you, you know, just generally look at it but for the most part they're pretty simple to go ahead and create and the options that you you know can do are endless there's just so many things you can create and animate and you know make some cool things so what we're going to do here is create create our keyframes here and we're going to call this bounce okay now we're going to be using percents here because we want to alter some things halfway through the animation so at 0%, we don't want to change anything, all right, because the circle is already at the position we want it, but we want to alter the animation here at 50% or halfway through, and halfway through, you want to go ahead and use a transform property, and we're going to translate on the Y, and we're going to go up 50 pixels, so we're going to say negative 50 pixels. Now, when the animation is complete, we're going to say 100%, and we want to transform and we want to translate the Y back to zero. And that's going to be our simple keyframe here. So what we want to do is once again, we're going to come down to animation, our shorthand property. We're going to define the animation name, which was bounce. We're going to say 1200 milliseconds for the duration. The timing of this is going to be ease. And then we're going to say infinite. Okay, now if I save this and we go over here, You'll see right now they're all bouncing at the same time, which doesn't look like our demo here. And frankly, it looks kind of weird. So what we need to do is actually delay each one of these span tags by a certain amount so that it has the desired effect where it's bouncing, you know, not all at the same time. So it's actually fairly simple. What we're going to do here is we're going to say circle bounce span. And we're going to use pseudo selectors here where I say an nth child. And we're going to get the second span tag here. And all we're going to do is we're going to pass to the animation delay. And we're going to set the first or the second one, I should say, to 150 milliseconds um, of a delay. And then what I'm going to do is copy this down two more times. And for the third one, we're going to give this the delay of 250 milliseconds. And then for the fourth one, we're going to simply give it a delay of 350. Now if we come over to our demo now, you'll see that each one is being delayed and we have the desired effect that we are looking for. So that is how we go ahead and create our circle bounce animation. All right, one thing before we move on to the next animation that I wanted to go ahead and clarify here is that we actually don't need this 100% uh, portion of our keyframe within bounce. Now, the reason why we don't need this is because the default position for the translate Y is going to be zero. Now, if you recall, animations don't actually keep these uh, properties that you set during the animation. Once the animation is complete, it goes back to its original position. So since our original position with the 
uh, circle bound span is going to be zero, we don't need to explicitly even define this. We can actually remove this and simplify our keyframe of bounce here. And if we save it, it'll still work the same. All right, moving along with our animations here, the next one we're gonna be working on is going to be the circle fade effect here. So what's going on is we are simply changing the opacity of the circle down to zero, and we're also translating the uh, circle on the y-axis ever so slowly, just a few pixels to kind of give it a little of a um, up and down effect. All right, so let's head over to VS Code and get started with that. So. What we're going to want to do is to save some time, we're actually going to be using the same markup here as the circle bounce. So I'm going to go ahead and do a few line breaks here, and I'm going to copy and paste this in. So we got this circle opacity comment, and then we have the div with the circle opacity class name, and then our four spans. Okay, so what we want to do here is it's going to be very similar, if not exactly the same, to our previous styling here with the circle bounce. So what I'm going to do to save some time again is we're gonna copy this uh, the styling here and we're gonna say circle opacity and then we'll change this one here as well, okay? And then the only thing we wanna change and remove for now is this animation property. We don't want that on there just yet. So if we head over to our file here, you'll see we have our four circles here. So that is all working great. So let's go ahead and work on our animation here. So let's head back over to VS Code and this animation is actually going to be very simple. So just above our circle opacity div, we're going to create our keyframes here. And what we want to do here, our sorry, keyframes, we're going to give this the name of fade. And simply what we want to do is going to be very similar to our keyframe of bounds. We just want to target the animation at the 50% mark. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say transform and we're gonna say translate Y, and we're just gonna adjust that by three pixels going up. And then also we wanna do is set the opacity to zero. Okay, so now if we were to add this to our circle opacity span here, so what we wanna do is animation, we're gonna call this fade. We're gonna give it a duration of 1500 milliseconds. The timing function is gonna be ease, and then we're gonna say infinite. All right, so if we save that, head over to our file, you'll see that it's doing the same exact thing that our bouncing balls did in the beginning before we added some sort of animation delay. So we need to add an animation delay to each one of our spans just as we did with our bouncing balls here. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna copy and paste these again to save some time here and not write out the same exact code. And then we're just gonna simply say circle opacity here and then we'll replace these quickly and we can just select these all like this. And then we'll paste that in there. And the only thing we're gonna change here is the animation delay. We're gonna give this a delay of two, let's see here, 200 milliseconds for the first one. We're also going to give the second one a delay of 300. And the last one of four. All right, so if we save that and we go look at it now, you can see it looks a lot better. Now there's still one thing I do wanna change here, which is going to be the background color, because right now they're all the same and it looks a little bit weird. If you go over here, you may notice that they are a little bit lighter as they kind of continue on here into the fourth one. So what I actually did simply is we're gonna change the background color, which is gonna be teal, but we're gonna give the opacity of a little bit lighter for each one of the spans as we go along. So what I'm doing here is a background color of RGBA, and then simply what we're gonna do is we're gonna knock the opacity down by 20% um, for each one of our spans going all the way to the fourth one. And when we get to the fourth one, we're gonna give it a opacity of four. All right, so now if we head over to our animation here, you should see it looks a little bit better. It's not all the same color and it kind of gives it that more effect that it's being opacity down to zero. And that is simply going to be our animation for the circle fade effect. Okay, then next up, we're going to be working on our circle breath animation here. So this is going to utilize the scale property and it's going to scale the circle down to almost zero and then back to the default value. All right, so let's head over to VS Code and get started here. So. As you can see, we're going to be using uh, the same markup here again. So what I'm gonna do is copy and paste this down because for these circles, it's going to be the exact same thing. 
and instead of opacity, we'll say circle breath, and then we'll change this comment to breath as well. All right, and that's going to be our markup for this circle breath animation here. All right, next up, I'm going to simply copy and paste the circle breath um, styling here because like I said again these have all the same styling so I don't want to go ahead and be too repetitive here and waste your time with the exact same uh, markup here so if we go ahead and save this and head over to our web browser here you'll see we have our circles and that is all set up and ready to go so let's go ahead and work on our animation here so what we want to do is we want to create our keyframes as always and we're going to give this a name of breath and the first thing we want to do is we're going to be uh, doing a little bit of a different uh, method than we have been in our, all of our other um, animations here. We can see we're just using 50%, 50%, and then we're using two here. This is the first animation we're actually going to be using more than two um, different um, percentages in our keyframe. So the first one we're going to target here is 25%. Now at 25%, we're going to use a transform property here. We're going to say scale and we're going to set it equal to 0.1. So just for reference here, the default value for the scale is going to be 1. So we don't have to explicitly define that at 0% because it's already at that default value. So from 0% to 25%, it's going to go down to 0.1 on the scale. All right. And then halfway through, what we want to do is we're going to say transform again scale and we're going to set that equal to one and then when we get to 75 percent we want to then go a little bit above one and we're going to say 1.1 and then when the animation finishes it'll go back to one because that is the default value when the animation is going to end okay so the final thing we need to go ahead and do here to actually get this animation working is define it on our uh, span here so we're going to say animation and we're going to say breath we're going to give it a duration of 1200 milliseconds. Now, the one other difference here is actually we're going to be using the linear timing function instead of ease. And then we want to go ahead and set this to infinite. Now, one other thing I want to go ahead and do is change these um, animation delays to, let's see here, 100 milliseconds, 200, and then 300. All right, so that should do it for our breath animation. So let's go ahead and check it out to make sure everything is working properly. And there we go. You can see that it is working properly, and that is how we go ahead and construct or build out the uh, breath animation. All right, so moving away from our circle animations here, we're going to get into something a little bit different, which is going to be the squares. So what we're doing here is we're not only rotating the squares, we're also moving it along the X axis left and right. All right, so let's head over to our editor here and begin to actually build out this animation here so once again I guess this is the only thing that's going to be repetitive is going to be the markup so what I'm going to go ahead and do here is copy this down once more now instead of saying circle breath here we're going to say square and we'll say rotation all right and then for the class name here on the div we're going to say square rotation all right now for our styling this is actually going to be a little bit different so i'm actually going to write all this out with you guys so what we're going to say here is square rotation the div itself we're going to set this to display flex all right and then what we want to do is we're going to say square rotation span here and we're going to give this a margin top of auto we're going to give it a margin right to separate them by 12 pixels. Then we want to display this as block. We're going to give this a width of 30 pixels and a height of 30 pixels as well. And then for the background color, as we have always done, we're going to give that the color of teal. All right. And I can see I did a double period there, so that should fix that. So let's go ahead and take a look and make sure that's all working properly. And you can see here we have our three squares. But the issue is in our animation or our demo here, you can see the squares are smaller as we go ahead and get down, uh, down the line and to the right. So let's go ahead and fix that really quick. So what we want to do is we're going to say 
let's see here, I probably can copy this in, and we're going to say span, and we'll say, or use our pseudo selectors here, nth child, two, and we want to give the second one a width of 20 pixels and also a height of 20 pixels, and we're going to simply decrease each span as we go all the way down to our fourth one. So we'll say three here, and we'll decrease this by five more pixels, so we'll say 15, and we'll say 15 here. All right, and then for our fourth one, what we want to do is we're going to set this equal to 10. So what we can do is just copy this like that, and we'll say 10. All right, so if we head over here now, you should see the square is decreased in size. And the reason why we use margin top auto is to push the square to the very bottom. If we didn't have that property, if I go ahead and remove it really quick, you can see that the squares will be at the top, and we don't want that. All right, so let's go ahead and add that back. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin to actually work on our animation here. So right above the square rotation, we're going to define our keyframes here. And we're going to say, uh, we'll call this, uh, yeah, square rotation. Okay. Now inside of here, we're going to have something similar to the breakdown we did in our breadth, which we're going to have 25%. And in here, we're going to use a transform property again, but we're going to be altering two different values here. We're going to say first, translate the X, and we want to set that to negative 30 pixels. Now we also want to rotate on the Z axis by negative 100 degrees. Okay. And I'm just going to go and copy and paste this down two more times. And the next one we want to do is going to be 50%. And here what we're going to say is 0 for the translate x. And then for the degrees, we're going to set it back to the default value of 0. Now for 75%, we're simply going to flip this around. Instead of saying negative 30, we're going to say 30. And instead of saying negative 100 degrees, we're going to say 100 instead. So it's going to go back and forth left to right. Okay, so that is going to be our simple animation, or I should say our keyframe here. So let's go ahead and add this to our span here. We'll say animation, and we're going to say square rotation. We're going to give this a duration of 2,000 milliseconds. Once again, we're going to use linear, and then we're going to have this run infinitely. All right, now if we save this and we head over to our project here, you can see that we now have the animation, but it's only going one way. So what did we do wrong here? Let me go ahead and take a look. Uh, let's see here, square rotation, 30 pixels, 100 degrees. Oh, we didn't change this to 75%. That's why it's only going the one way. All right, so if we head back over here now, you should see it's going back left and right. So it's going right 30 pixels, left 30 pixels, and our squares are also rotating on the Z axis at the same time. So that is going to be how we build out this square rotation animation. All right, then, so for the final animation, we're going to create this really cool effect that at first glance may look really complex, but actually it is really simple to go ahead and do. So all we're doing is we're scaling down each square, but we're adding an animation delay to each one of these diagonal rows to go ahead and give this really cool effect. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So... To begin here, let's go ahead and just copy and paste this markup in to save some time because it's very similar and I don't want to waste time um, typing out markup here. So all we're doing here is got this square block comment. doesn't really mean anything. But then we have this div with the class of square block with nine different span elements in it because we have nine elements that we're going to need for this animation. Okay, And that is a simple markup. So let's head over to our style sheet here and begin to style this out. So let's go ahead and target our square, let's see, square block wrapper here. And we're going to set this to display and grid. And then we're going to say grid template columns, repeat three, one FR, because we want three uh, columns here for this. Okay. Now we want to target our span here. So we're going to say square block span and then we're going to say border one pixel solid transparent we're going to give this a display of block we're going to give it a width of 20 pixels and also a height 
of 20 pixels as well. And then lastly, a background color here of teal. Okay, and that's all we're gonna need to do for our span. So let's begin to work on our animation here, which is actually really simple to go ahead and complete. So let's say at key frames here, and we're gonna give this the name of square, let's see here, square block. And we're gonna be using the from and to here for this animation. So we're gonna say from transform. We wanna start this at a scale of 0 0.9. Okay, so a little bit less than the default value. And then we're gonna say to, and then we're gonna say transform this to scale zero, okay? And that's going to be it for our animation. So let's go ahead and add this animation here to our span. So we're gonna say animation with a shorthand property, get pass of the name. We're gonna give this a time of 200, let's see, milliseconds. We're gonna be using the ease in out option here for the timing function. And then we're gonna say infinite. Okay, so if we head over to our web browser here, you'll see that currently it doesn't show. Let's refresh it here, and we don't have it. We must have done something wrong. Let me see here. Square, SQ. Oh, I did it again. There we go. Spelled that wrong. Okay, there we go. So there is our square animation. You can see right now it looks um, not so good. It looks really weird. So we need to work on our animation delays here. So let's go ahead and do that. So... What we want to say here is we're going to be actually combining some of these elements together. So if you look at this logically, it's actually pretty simple. So we want to delay number two and four, and then we want to delay three. I think this is five and then seven, and then we want to delay six and eight, and then we want to do nine itself. So we're going to be kind of going in this rows, delaying each one of these rows by a certain amount of time. So hopefully that makes sense. So let's actually get into writing this out here. So we're going to say square block span nth child two. And I'm going to go ahead and actually duplicate this down. So we're going to say two and four. We don't need that here and we're going to simply say animation delay and we're going to say 100 milliseconds all right and then i'm going to go ahead and duplicate this down and instead of saying two and four we're going to say three five and then we want to do one more here and then we don't need this and that comma and we're going to say seven and then for this delay we're going to set this to 200 milliseconds not three and then let's go ahead and just copy this one down again right here so we're going to say six and eight and then we want to say 300 milliseconds for this one not 1300 and then finally what we want to do is i'll just copy this one more time is you want to look at the ninth one so we can go ahead and just get rid of this one here and we're going to say the ninth span, and which is gonna be our last one in the bottom right hand corner, and we'll set that to 400 milliseconds. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. We're just kind of going diagonally and we're using pseudo selectors to select these by saying the second child and the fourth that lines up diagonally, and then three, five, and seven, which also lines up diagonally, and then so forth. All right, so that is going to be the styling. So now if we head over to our actual web browser here, you should see we have the complete animation here. So that's going to go ahead and wrap up this video with building some loading animations using pure CSS and then some animations. So hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you guys did, be sure to leave a like on it down below and subscribe for more videos like this. And I will see you guys in the next project.